Okay, I think we've got everyone joined. Well, welcome, good morning, and uh, thanks very much for taking some time out of your day to join this webinar. Where we're gonna be going through some of the communication challenges for schools, and importantly, what solutions are out there to solve them. Uh, we've been through this webinar a few times, had a few rehearsals. It's gonna last about 20 to 25 minutes uh, with some allowances for some questions at the end. Um, hopefully you're familiar with the uh, Zoom platform, but just in case, um, you can pose a question by clicking on the Q&A button um, at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, we'll try and answer some questions as we go along, but if not, we've um, got a little bit of time at the end uh, to answer them. I'm sure we'll get through them. Okay. So first of all, um, let's have a look at um, a brief introduction of who's talking today. I'm Simon Lister from Midshire Telecom. We're an award-winning supplier of telecommunications to UK schools. Uh, we've been successfully doing so for the last 20 years and uh, supplying organizations in the education sector for telecommunication solutions. That's evolved from supplying telephone calls and telephone lines, saving money for schools so they can use that money for other things within the schools. Um, to being now a one-stop shop for all telecommunications and IT needs. Um, our support centre, which is situated smack bang in the middle of the country, uh, it's on your screen just now, uh, that's where all of our support people are, and our engineers, the feet on the street, so to speak, they span the length and breadth of the country. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined today as well by NEC, that's probably a name that you recognise, um, and indeed, for the, uh, for the six year running, uh, NEC has been recognized with the prestigious accolade of being not just the UK, but the global number one in small to medium sized telephone systems, which makes them a great choice for um, telecommunication solutions for schools. Um, we've been a partner of NEC for many, many years now, and, and quite a key partner, NECR of Midshire, in that their products fit the specific requirements for schools really, really well. Um, to explain this more simply, NEC, NEC supply the products, the hardware and the software uh, for, that, that are particular for schools, uh, backed by their tremendous support. Midshire supply the network and the provisioning expertise, the engineering, to make sure those solutions are delivered properly and, and smoothly for you, the customers. Uh, I've popped on the screen a selection of customers that we deal with, not exhausted by any means. Uh, we, 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 uh, we work with a range of uh, sectors within the UK, but the schools ones in particular, we have an in-depth understanding, uh, which spans back, as I've said, uh, up over 20 years. Um, and with that, we're delighted that we're actually um, a proud sponsor of the six regional school business man management forums across the country, uh, quite proudly to do so. Uh, during the first lockdown, uh, Mitchell were on hand quickly to give advice and solutions for schools as we entered the pandemic. Uh, one in particular was 4G dongles to, to give pupils the access to the internet, online access, so they could reach vital learning uh, when, when we got into the pandemic. I suppose that what that does is give you some assurance that uh, Midshire are committed uh, to providing innovative and useful IT solutions uh, to the education sector. So to set the scene a little with the communication challenges, um, I wanted to go through a couple of quotes that have come from our school customers, our education customers, who we've worked with over the last 12 months or so, um, or more. We listen to our customers and there's a, there's a common thread. Uh, the pain points that they come across are, are quite frankly, they're the same uh, throughout the schools that we talk to. I wanted to share them with you. So I'll go through them one by one. Um, the first one, we're bombarded with telephone calls first thing in the morning. Often callers receive an engaged tone and can't get through. Yeah, I've heard this one an awful lot. Um, most of the people on the call today, they'll know that the busiest time for receiving incoming calls into a school is first thing in the morning between 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Um, on a traditional telephone system and traditional telephone lines, when those lines are busy, you know, incoming calls from parents they can't get through trying to report a child's absence or find out information about the school, what's going on, um, and if perhaps there's a school closure or so on and so forth. So quite a common pain point. Second one on the list I've got here, uh, we haven't got a budget for a phone in every room 
and that makes it difficult to contact teachers. Uh, again, most of the people on the, on the call today will know that teachers are notoriously difficult to get hold of. Um, and when a message needs to get through to a teacher, uh, often it means someone getting up, walking down the corridor to get to a classroom to give on the message. So a common pain point. And by the way, I'm not going to give you the answers to these questions, the solutions to them. I'm going to leave that to Mark towards the end. Um, the third one I've got here is, uh, in the event of an emergency on the school premises, we're having difficulties implementing lockdown procedures. Um, so a related scenario is, is, is what to do if the school needs to enter lockdown immediately for some sort of emergency. And we've had that reported to us many times. It's really difficult to announce to the whole school immediately uh, that lockdown measures, whatever them, those might be, need to be implemented right away. And, and fourthly, um, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, we have had to close the school for certain year groups. Is there an automatic way of having a message play when callers contact the school? I've heard this a lot as well during the pandemic, um, particularly when um, things were changing from day to day and you had to rip up the rule book and, and change the way that you were operating. Um, and often changing a message on a telephone system is quite difficult. A technician, perhaps from a service provider like Midshire, has to dial into the system to make that change, uh, change the way that calls uh, are routed to people and to messages, uh, or worse still, even an engineer has to come to site and actually make that change for you. Um, so if, if any of these pain points um, are particular to your organization, to your school, well, you should be on the right webinar. Um, and with that, I'm, I'm delighted to welcome Mark Ratherham, um, who's the National Sales Manager at NEC, and he's going to talk about that a little bit more. Over to you, Mark. Thank you, Simon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's a great privilege to be here in front of you uh, this morning uh, and sharing some ideas how technology can help you in uh, so many different ways, and, and certainly in the situation that we find ourselves in right now so uh, the back to school we look forward to some sort of normality well will it be normality uh, as we know and known it previously i think uh, as the next slide suggests we are now heading into the uh, and it's well documented the new normal we inevitably will have new challenges new priorities changing working environments with the same amount of staff and the same time to conduct your normal day-to-day -day duties having to make sure that pupils are, meet, are coming into the school make sure their hands are sanitized make sure they, they've got the mask on make sure they're not in the corridor congregating in huge groups the list is endless of the responsibilities that you are now facing so we hope that technology can actually pick up some of that shortfall in order for you to continue to offer a fantastic service to the people that are phoning into the school ensuring that pupils and teacher safety are paramount, no matter where you're working, whether obviously in the school, working from home, and obviously the gr greater pressure and providing communications internally in the school, as well as to the people that are phoning in the school. Next slide, Simon. So NEC have a, a variety of solutions, we on-premise or cloud solutions. Cloud solutions is probably something that is familiar to you or putting data in the cloud, and that can be the same for the telephone system. But NEC recognized for at the education sector that an on-premise telephone system is the preferred solution for various reasons. It will provide you stability, flexibility, and it's extremely cost-effective. We have two platforms in our portfolio, the SL2100, which is ideal for smaller primary schools, and that telephone system can actually expand up to 112 extensions. For the larger secondary schools, colleges, academies, or even academies or secondary, or secondary schools that are separated by distance, so you've got several locations all in one particular area wanting one telephone system. The SV9100 is ideally suited for that type of uh, infrastructure and that footprint. It can actually handle up to 896 extensions and 400 trunks. So we are well within a, sp a scope of providing a solution for any type of school. So dealing with COVID-19 challenges, yet again, very forefront of our, our minds, 
and uh, something that <clears throat> has affected everybody, and, and in particular, you people that are looking after our children in school. You need to have that flexibility. You need to work from anywhere, whether it's in the school, outside of school, at home, and NEC can provide you a whole host of type of solutions. We can provide you a soft phone, so an application that resides on your laptop, and you would dial in uh, via VPN onto your uh, infrastructure, as you would do if you got your emails, and you can open up a soft phone. And that soft phone has the same features and functionality as a telephone would have residing on your desk. So you can work anywhere, anytime, and still be connected and still offering that level of service. For those people that want to provide a video type learning, we have a, an application called NUC. So now we can actually um, have small groups of remote learning sessions where we can actually have video as we've got similar this morning. We can actually share documents and have a discussion around those documents. Uh, and yet again, aiding that experience and keeping that education flow to our pupils or even to hold staff meetings. For those people that are on the move, if you've got a, uh, a, an iOS device or an Android device, we can have a, a, an app uh, down, installed onto that device and um, you can be connected over the internet, over the Wi-Fi, whether that be at home or in the school um, or even on 5G when you're out of the uh, school environment and infrastructure. You can be connected no matter where you are at any time of the day, which can be good or bad, of course. Next slide. Safety for teachers and pupils. Now, this is a, a very hot topic and has been for some considerable time now. So uh, as we uh, go uh, get back to some sort of normality, the new norm, the safety of the pupils and the teachers have to be uh, considered. So what can we do uh, to aid this uh, experience? Well, <clears throat> at nine o'clock, the pupils are actually uh, in the classrooms with the teachers and the corridors are left unmanned and anybody could walk into your school. And that can create a whole host of anxiety and uh, concern along the way. By deploying a door phone, which that's a normal door phone or a video door phone, you are now asking that person who's coming to your door to press the button and have a conversation um, to a uh, extension user. And that person can verify that person's got a, an appointment and he needs expected. And inevitably, we can press a button on the handset and it opens up electronic door locks. And now we're starting to control the people that are coming into the school when the corridors and the other areas around the school are unmanned. OK, in the in the classroom itself, what do you actually do when a pupil becomes ill, violent, abusive? You may wish to consider having a panic button on your handset. So when that's pressed, it can generate a ringing of all the idle handsets in the, uh, in, the, in the school, notifying them there's a problem in classroom number two, as an example. Also, lockdown is quite a topical subject. Yet again, if we did see somebody uh, untoward in the corridor and we wanted to make everybody aware, by a single press of a button, an automatic announcement can be played through the every idle handset in the building or an external paging system like you would experience in a supermarket where announcement could be the school is now in lockdown. Please remain into the classroom until further notice or within a click of a button. Call recording. Yeah, again, we have various solutions for this, but in the education vertical, um, they want something that is a little bit ad hoc. So not every call needs to be recorded, but there are going to be times where maybe a parent's phoning in and being a little bit rude and abusive and you don't get paid to take that type of abuse. And you want to record that, uh, that call in order for you to escalate it to your uh, seniors in order for them to take action to the relevant person that was being abusive. How to deal with the telephone rush hour? Well, most people will uh, say the rush hour is between eight o'clock and 9.30 where parents are actually phoning in and uh, reporting their child not coming into school. But it can be di different types of situations what creates you know, anxiety when a lot of calls are coming into the, uh, into the school. It may be where you've got bad weather and people are phoning in to find out whether the school is open due to the snow. It could be people phoning in, trying to find out 
um, when their exam results are due, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the NEC telephone system, one of the unique selling points of this is that it has eight levels of day and night service. So we can be really nimble and flexible on where we de deliver those calls when we're getting a high volume uh, of calls, whether that's first thing in the morning, in the afternoon, click of a button, we can change the way that the telephone system responds. So we can actually have in-queue announcements, announcing to people that are waiting to be answered, that they we know that they're there and we'll get to them as soon as possible. First thing in the morning, you may wish to um, have your telephone system working in an auto automated tendent uh, way of working where parents can actually phone in, press one, and are able to leave a, a message informing you of when their child um, is, is obviously off sick, what class uh, that child belongs to, and when they expect to return to school. And yet again, that's just a voicemail, and we can convert that into an email, so a web attachment. So yet again, within your inbox, where you're getting all your emails, you are now able to get your voicemails on any device, whether it's a mobile phone, um, or even on, on a telephone itself. We need a school helpline. Now, pressures for the, the pupils is, is ever increasing, not only in school, but outside school, cyber bullying's increasing, and that can come from every area, I respect that, but they have nobody to talk to. And yet again, the pressure of the school itself about pupil performing and these unbelievable behaviors that uh, pupils are facing now are a huge concern. So how can we actually help with that matter? Well, that's very easy as the next slide um, will demonstrate to you. The pupil welfare <clears throat> is obviously a major importance. So we can have a dedicated helpline. This is a unique telephone number that's advertised to the pupils that when they phone in, they can leave a, a, a message uh, anonymously. Um, they can obviously confide um, and, and share uh, their problem. And um, basically all we actually do is deliver that message to the relevant person that deals with that could be the head teacher, the headmaster, head of year, et cetera, et cetera. So all we're actually dealing with is putting that concern into a voicemail and making you aware of that particular pupil's problem. So that has to be good for the pupil. And after hours, if you wanted to divert those calls to a dedicated helpline or charity, yet again, this can all happen within a click of a button. So some of the common pain points uh, that Simon touched on before. Um, so uh, we are bombarded with telephone calls first thing in the morning, often callers received engaged tone and can't get through. Well, as I mentioned, we have eight levels of day and night service that can uh, make your telephone system work in various ways. And that can be a manual procedure or a automatic procedure. So you may want to work in a specific way from eight o'clock till quarter past nine, where people are phoning in and you want that automatic process of the, the parent pressing one and leaving information about their child not being in at school today. He belongs to class five Y and he expected back at a certain date. Yet again, that can be uh, ascertained at a time that is more convenient to yourself. And of course, you can have in queue announcements and things like that. The next one that Simon pinpointed, we haven't got a budget for a phone in every room that makes it difficult to contact teachers. Well, um, I certainly appreciate, appreciate the, can, uh, the budget restraints in such difficult times, but there are some simple solutions and very cost solutions that you may wish to consider. We've touched on the ST500, which was a free of charge app that can be download, downloaded onto an iOS or an Android device. Um, yes, this needs a license on the telephone system, but it is a minimal amount. Um, you could have a phone in the staff room and give all the members of staff a virtual extension. So you're not having to have a device on everybody's desk only in the staff room. And when the staff room, go, the staff go into the room, staff room for uh, a coffee or lunch, they will look at the device, look at their button, that's their virtual extension. And if it's flashing, they, they can obviously retrieve their messages uh, as they go through um, their, their lunch, as it were. The next question, we're having difficulties implementing lockdown procedures. Well, yeah, again, it really starts at the forefront, as I mentioned before, uh, and that would be making sure that 
you know, the, the school is secure. Putting door phones in, in place, allowing people to press the button, we can make one phone ring, 100 phones ring, it doesn't really concern us. And they can have that communication with the person at the door. If they're expected, that's fantastic. You can have the electronic door lock, as I mentioned before, by pressing a button, we can allow them into the building. But if you don't have electronic door lock, that doesn't matter. You can go to the door, you can have multiple door phones, so we can identify where that person's at and then allow them into the building. Due to COVID-19 outbreak, we've had um, to close schools and certain year groups. Is there a way of automatically having a message play when callers contact the school? Absolutely. Um, yet again, the eight levels of day and night service can play into that, and you um, you can pre uh, program the telephone system um, and, and change those manually. Um, you can change the way uh, your telephone responds uh, and the messages that the caller is listening to. So not only um, due to the COVID outbreak where you want to give a message uh, delivered to the caller before the phone rings, and you can inform them about the uh, school fees are due or the um, sports days taking place on, on, on Tuesday, it could be any message. It could be a message where you are expecting the um, pupils back from a school trip. The parents are phoning in, trying to get an understanding of what time the school, uh, the, pet, the pupils are due back at school. And this can be changed remotely with a teacher on the, uh, on the coach, phoning into the telephone system, changing the message, making people aware that the school trip, the pupils are due back at 4.30. Please phone in at four o'clock and you'll get a uh, further update. So all very, very simple applications to aid the way that your school works. Real, uh, thanks, Mark. Um, that's no a really good overview um, of the benefits that an NEC telephone system can bring. Hopefully, um, everyone on the call has found some of that useful. Um, we've only really scratched the surface, I suppose. So um, if you want to learn more about the NEC telephone system, following the webinar, an email is going to be sent out, uh, just giving you some more details, some useful resource um on the nec product and also thanking you for your, for your attendance uh, you can engage with one of our account managers really really easy if you require a demo or a virtual appointment or even a site visit if um, if that's required um, before the q a we've got a couple of questions that have come in i, I do think it's worthwhile mentioning that some of the, some of the pain points that we've talked about um, can actually be related to um, the old BT type telephone lines that are still out there. Um, and, and that actually a quarter of schools that were recently surveyed uh, didn't know they were affected by this. Um, we, we do know that many schools are affected by it. So if you need any uh, advice on this, if you're a bit unsure, you can talk to, talk to us about it. No obligation, of course, we can do a quick check to see. Um, to put a little bit of meat on the bones on that, uh, BT announced some years ago that they were going to be turning off the old technology there the public switch telephone network, the PSTN. Um, they're going to be doing that towards the end of 2025. Uh, so if you've already got those telephone lines, those types of telephone lines at the moment, there's, there's never really been a better time to migrate to the newer technologies, to an NEC telephone system, giving that old technology the boot, uh, as well as saving some money along the way that can be allocated to, to something more, um, more, more productive for the school. Um, We've, we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Um, I think I'll, I'll grab the first one there, Mark. Um, do we need Cat5 cabling for an NEC phone system? Well, the, the answer to that question is no, you don't. Um, one, one of the beauties with um, the NEC phone system and one of the reasons it fits really, really well for schools is that we recognize, and so do NEC, that a lot of schools have got the older 1308 cabling. Uh, and, and as a consequence, many of the uh, handsets within the NEC range, they're digital and they work on that type of infrastructure. Uh, and that means that you know you can take advantage of all the sort of solutions and benefits that we've talked about today uh, but use them on on that particular cabling rather than going to the expense of investing in in cat5 cabling throughout where you need telephones and what have you so so the answer to the question is no you don't need cat5 cabling uh well, a really good question thanks for that um the, the second one here is um do you have software that shows call statistics mark do you, do you want to pick that one up Absolutely. Um, there's a, a variety of different applications that allows you to um, measure and manage and monitor how you are 
uh, dealing with the incoming call uh, traffic. Um, we have an entry level product, um, yet again, using browser technology, so no external PCs or servers required, so extremely cost effective, um, called in reports. Uh, and that can you give you graphical information, you can run reports from it daily, weekly, monthly, uh, and things like that. So um, having um, some form of software allows you to manage your system really well. You know, how, how many times do you, you, we all think how many calls am I actually missing? Yet again, in reports, we'll be able to manage that. And um, yet again, you only may have one or two phones ringing in the, in the, the peak uh, times of eight o'clock till quarter past nine. And clearly we need more phones and that's how you would actually manage your telephone system. So we have a, a variety of different types of solutions to deal with that problem. Okay, thanks, Mark. The, the, there's, there's a couple more questions here. So I'm, I'm going to take this one. Um, the, this is, do you have cordless handsets? Okay, yeah, absolutely. So if you need, um, if there are handsets for certain members of staff that need to be mobile throughout the, the premises, throughout the site, um, there are quite a, a wide range of cordless, we call them decked. Uh, solutions, but they're, they're cordless phones that you can move around um, the, the site and, and be contactable at all times. And, and on top of that, um, those, those phones have a panic button available to, to instigate lockdown, to get in touch with someone that, that can help you if there's a certain situation, what have you. So those types of handsets are yeah, widely available on the NEC platform. Um, I hope that answers that question, but thank you for it. I've, I've got another one here. Um, I, I missed the bit about virtual numbers. Please, could you explain that again? Um, Mark, could you pick that one up, please? Yeah, certainly. So um, having what we call virtual extensions in, in effect is a, uh, an extension can be de uh, dedicated, dedicated to a, a member of staff. Um, and that needs um, the opportunity to have voicemails uh, left um, for that teacher. So um, we would um, have a, a central point, maybe the staff room um, and a handset. And on that handset, there'll be a button that will be your virtual extension. And uh, if there was any voicemail messages, yet again, that button would flash. You'd uh, hit that button, enter in your password, and you'll be able to retrieve your messages. So very simple. It's just a virtual extension. There's no um, physical hardware there. You just access um, your voicemails on your virtual extension at a central point, such as the staff room. Yeah, and, and importantly, you know that's a that's quite a budget. It's 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 a, it's a really good way, cost-effective way of, of of delivering that solution, isn't it, Mark? So yeah, good. absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've I've got an. In fact, there's another question just come in about virtual extensions. How many <laughs> virtual extensions can one handset deal with, Mark? Yeah, again, um, you are working within the, um, the boundaries of the telephone system. So the SL2100 can have up to 112 extensions and the SV9100 uh, can have 896. So as long as you're in that boundary, you, you're fine. Yeah, um, I've, got, I've got another one here. Um, so we are due to become part of a three school map with possible future growth. Is there a system that allows people to dial a single number for the map? Press one for school A, two for school B, three for school C, four for the head teacher who oversees the three schools, uh, but could be in any of any one of those schools at any time. Mark? Absolutely. Yeah, again, that's that's just auto attendance. So the, the callers are coming in. You want them to um, put themselves in a, a particular school or a department. Press one for this, two for that and three for the head school. Um, not a problem at all. So auto attendant is a, is a basic feature. You can actually multi-layer it, but the problem that may create, as we've all experienced um, before, whether it's dealing with Sky or um, uh, British Airways, you have all these options and it becomes confusing and people get a little bit annoyed. In my opinion, maybe two layers. So if they're pressing one for the upper school, then they get the options to talk to the head teacher, the science department, Keep it as really simple as possible, then it will work for you. Don't overload the caller with a whole host of options, in my opinion. Yeah, it can be done. Um, absolutely. So that, 
Thanks and yet again, again sorry Simon, and yet again, with the eight levels of day and night service, you can change the way that the telephone system works, the central answering point, very, very easily as well. Yeah, really good. I've got another one here. Um, can we transfer numbers from our old uh, local authority Centrex system, or would we have new numbers? I'll take that one, Mark. Yes, absolutely, of course you can. Um, so, um, any, any numbers that you've currently got, of course, you're going to need continuity um, if you're changing your telephone system and the types of lines and, and those telephone numbers are, are brought over seamlessly um, with, with no downtime. So absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. Um, I think we've covered, oh, I've got another one. Is there a restriction on how many external lines out of the school? Um, I suppose that depends on the size of system. Um, Mark, do you want to just grab that, please? Yeah, um, yeah, there, there obviously um, there are some boundaries to deal with. The um, uh, and Simon's touched on um, ISDN switching off and going to SIP and things like that. Um, the 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 S the SV ninety one hundred can have up to four hundred outside lines. So yeah, again, uh, I'm sure that would fit the bill. Uh, and the SL um, twenty one hundred. Um, it, it is about 45, I think, 45, 46, yeah. something like that. So plenty of lines to go with. Super. I think we've just got another one come in. Um, here we go. How do we know if we need to act regarding the BT switchover and what are the suggested timescales if we do? I can, I can grab that one. Um, so you, you can act on this now. Um, the there is no immediate need to do so. Um, the, the deadline for BT is December 2025 at this particular point to turn off the public switch telephone network. The, the one thing to bear in mind is that towards the end of 2023, um, BT are actually stopping you order new lines. So if you need to, to expand your telephone system and what have you, you with the old technology, you won't actually be able to order new stuff. So new lines and expand it. So really, really a, a, a good time to look at this is now, um, you know, in terms of time scales, uh, depending on what you've got at the moment, two to three weeks um, to, to perform a switch over uh, to the new, new service and get a new telephone system installed, perhaps for a small one, and maybe four to six weeks for something a little bit bigger. Uh, but it all, I suppose it all depends on uh, what, what the requirement is um, and what, what is absolutely certain is um, if you're dealing with Midshire on this, uh, there'd be a plan put in place to make sure it was done correctly and, and properly. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay. Um, I think that is it um, in terms of the questions. Uh, if you if you do have any more questions, um, don't don't um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us um, on the on the number below. Um, but thank you once again for joining the webinar. Uh, I hope you found it really really useful. Uh, thanks, Mark, as well for joining and our friend at NEC for making this uh, event possible. That number for contacting us if you want a demo, uh, some consultation or a site visit even, we can do that now. Um, don't, don't hesitate to give us a call. Our number is 0800 008 6038. Uh, and all that's left for me to do now is to say thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.